So, Paul, I have some bad news. Uh-oh. Are we canceling the show? I don't know. We'll have to see. I've got bupkis to talk about. Um, the only thing I played this week is Strong Bad's cool game for awesome people. And I don't have anything to say about Like, everybody that cares about Strong Bad already knows about it. And everybody that doesn't care doesn't want to hear about it. And the conversation won't make sense. And that's the only thing I <laughs> right. did all week. So Anyone who I, doesn't know who Strong Bad is doesn't want to learn who Strong Bad is. Exactly. Exactly. The opportunity has already passed. The ship has sailed on Strong Bad at this point. Right. It's like deciding to get into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, a decade after the cartoon goes off the air. Oh, man. Although their, their role-playing materials are just ace. I, I don't know how they did it, but really good role playing system i had no idea such a thing existed anyway the point <laughs> is it's all on you this week i hope you have enough content to carry us through the show because i have bupkis okay um well i got an email this week saying that google poly is shutting down which is kind of like playing the strong bad game where if you know what Google Poly is, you don't need me to tell you because they already sent you the same email. And if you don't know what Google Poly is, then you don't know why it's important that it's shutting down and you probably don't okay. care. Okay. Who is Polly? Who is she? Why is she important? <laughs> yeah, P-O-L-Y like Polygon. So it's Google's, oh. it's basically the, the online tilt brush sharing site where, you know, tilt brush is like a, a VR painting right. modeling software right. or something and i think google acquired it some years ago when they thought that vr was going to go big and so they got tilt brush and then they needed a place to put all the models and then google also put a bunch of low poly um assets on there for vr development so anyone can just download them for free uh i think it's under an attribution license so you have to put in your credits like we got these models from google poly and this user on google poly or whatever um and then you can just use them so that was really cool I really appreciated the the low poly model side of it because I like low poly modeling. It's it's my it's my jam, and uh, so I put a bunch of my models up on Google Poly, and but it was always this weird thing because you'd have these two camps of kinds of content on there. This like really low poly, streamlined, clean models, like well executed, uh, minimalist kind of stuff, and then also these great big spaghetti piles of just like whatever nonsense somebody made in tilt brush because of course the tilt brush stuff isn't optimized <laughs> right. it's not like it's not low poly in any sense of the word like there's no way to make a low poly model in tilt brush so it was just this right. weird collage of these two completely opposite styles and if you search for something it would bring up it like it didn't ask you do you want a low poly model or do you want a tilt brush model it was just like we're google we know what you want just put the words in the box and so i'd be looking for like okay i need like a low poly car a van a minivan so i'd search for minivan and it'd be like you know three low poly minivans by google poly and then like maybe one or two uh like box trucks that somebody had made in tilt brush that are all like you know these weird brush strokes <laughs> everywhere right. and then like a scene containing uh a, a, like a camper van in like the middle of a forest that someone had like really exquisitely drawn in tilt brush and, like it's gorgeous it's beautiful but it's not what i need in any way <laughs> so it's just this like right. come on google like you're supposed to be good at this give me a filter or something for like low poly models so I don't know what they're planning on doing with Tilt Brush. I don't know what they're planning on doing with all the models that were up on Google Poly, but it's shutting down on June 30th. And if you want to get any low poly models for free, Google Poly is there. And then I assume once the site is shut down, you won't even have to attribute anyone because there will be nothing to attribute. I just am curious why they're shutting it down. I'm trying to imagine somebody at Google going, oh crap, we're almost out of hard drive space. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the cynical side of me thinks that it's pretty clear that they haven't figured out a way to monetize people downloading 3D models and, and market to people that way, so they're just shutting it down because it doesn't make them any money. Right, but like the cost of it is like the entire site is probably the same cost as one minute of YouTube uploads. Like, who cares? 
It's just well, nothing. It's the a tilt spec brush to you. stuff is up. pretty huge. I mean, that some of the if you go on there, some of the tilt brush scenes are quite involved, and they're like you know 360 VR environments that someone's like made by hand or or whatever. I don't know. I don't even know what tilt sure. brush runs like. I've I've run it one time, so. Sure, but then you know YouTube gets 500 hours uploaded every minute, so. <laughs> right, that's, that's but they're a making big. a lot of money on off of YouTube now with adverts and, and stuff. So that's true. It's you know it's the monetization, right? Like, if you're making zero dollars off of it, even if it costs pittance compared to your operational costs, it's still a net negative. So I don't know. My other thought is that they're shutting it down so that they can use all the assets that people uploaded to train an AI to create 3D models, and they don't want to have to say that they don't want to have to use their own license in order to force right. themselves to attribute it to all the people that, whose models they used. And so they're just shutting it down so then they can feed all that data into their their uh, AI algorithm thing and, and not have to say whose data they used. Either one. I believe either theory. Or both. Who knows? I think it'd be really cool if, if Google developed some sort of like neural network... 3D modeling thing that could just like create 3D models of whatever. Right, you just give it a picture give it a picture of a 198 a red 1982 Honda hatchback and it just like, oh here. And you know, gives it yeah. to you that Yeah, wouldn't that be somebody, something? Right. But of course, as people who people who make models for a living probably are hoping that doesn't pan out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm kind of on both sides of the fence because I love the proc gen side of it where it's like, that's awesome. But I also do like make 3D models as a side gig and that would put me right out of business. Right. <laughs> right. If they make an AI neural network that can complain about video games, I am screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, well, we haven't. Oh, yeah, Seamus. I, I guess Our Reddit neural... hasn't put you out of business yet, so I, you're probably okay. Right. Our neural network spent a million words complaining about Mass Effect. Top that, meat boy. <laughs> it's just it's just a Markov generator for, for Mass Effect complaints. Yeah, not only that, not only would I be bitter about being, you know, run out of my job, but then to get my fix, I'd end up having to read its blog. <laughs> oh, man. Well, speaking of old men who are uh, bitter and, and trying to get by, uh, Creeper World 4 has just been released. It, it just went live on Steam. There was a demo, I think, last week, and, and now it's out. It's made by a single old guy, and he's a pretty neat dude. And uh, Creeper World is... I, I got turned on to Creeper World through your forums, I think. Uh, or someone commented or something about Creeper World 3. And I started playing it uh, whenever, just after it came out, I think maybe three or four years ago. And uh, it's it's quite a it's quite a game. It's like it's got a little bit of the Factorio stuff where you've got like infrastructure and, and materials, and it's got a bit of the RTS in there where you've got like turrets and stuff that move around. Um, and it's it's all about like it's a, it's an RTS but with zone control against a fluid enemy. So like the enemy is just this fluid that starts covering the map. And you've got to, like, push it back and stuff. So it's it's kind of like a, a statistical RTS where you're not trying to fight specific locations. You're trying to, like, create zones of reinforcement. Um, anyway, Creeper World 4 is basically Creeper World 3, but with 3D and some mechanic refinements that I think are improvements. So I've been having a good time with it. I'm watching the trailer now, and it looks... I know I've never played a Creeper World game, but it looks eerily familiar so i have either watched someone play this or maybe years ago i played the original and it's just too foggy for me i know i've never played this i haven't played it i, I just contradicted myself i know i haven't played it recently and i don't have any direct mem memories of playing it but maybe i played it way back 10 years ago or maybe i watched someone play it we'll put it that way bottom line is you yeah. can't trust my memory <laughs> okay yeah, it's a it's a good game. I enjoy it. It's it's fun. Um, along the same lines, Mindustry, which I think you have played, also had an update. Yes. Uh, just back in November, yeah. I think middle of November. We we both kind of concluded it was really neat, but too shallow and too easy. Isn't that what we concluded? 
Yeah, yeah. It it had some it had some involvement to it, but it it, it wasn't quite there yet. And so uh, right. he just released version six. And now instead of there being like a map tree, there's like a whole planet that you can travel to. And I'm not going to describe all the changes, but it has become more fascinating. I don't know if it's fascinating enough, but it's fascinating enough for me to be playing it again. So good job, Mindustry guy. Also made by, I think, a single developer. The heroes. These one these one person games. I love that that's possible again. You realize that there was a stretch where that just wasn't possible. It was the norm back in the 80s, and then it just vanished for like 20 years, and then now it's possible again for one person to make a full game and not just like some weird little demo, but like a real game. Right. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if he uses a yeah, um, engine for it or not. It's a it's a 2D. It's a pretty basic 2D presentation, which is one of the things I appreciate about it. It's not trying to be some fancy, crazy thing. It's just like... Right. Here's the game you're playing. Um, the the one thing that might hook you is that it now has uh, a programming language built into the game, and you can like put little blocks down that like query other blocks and control other blocks and send messages and write and read to memory addresses and it's it's quite it's quite a thing. Wow. So you can like automate the defense. Or yeah, the, yeah, and the turn behavior. on and off your generators and all that kind of stuff. Wow, that's pretty cool. I might go back and check it out. I can't remember. Wasn't it there was a version that ran in a web page, and then there was a version you that was a standalone? Yeah, you know, I think it might be still online. I'm not sure. Maybe it's all written in Perl or something. I I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Here I've got it in my Steam library, and sure enough, there's an update waiting. There you go. Yeah, I played it last last time we talked about it was February. That's the last time I played this. Yeah, it's it's very cool, and and like I said, you know, just a single a single guy or or a very small team. I you know usually when it's programmed by a single person, right? Scare quotes. It's actually a main developer that then contracts some of the stuff out. Like oh, I think he contracted right. out the music or or whatever, right? And like Notch made Minecraft by himself, quote unquote. But there's a bunch of other people that helped him that he hired to do this and that. And yeah, but who are those people? <laughs> no ones. They don't matter. They're they're ciphers in history. But uh, another small team, Introversion, um, has started releasing their prototypes recently. They just put up uh, the first one called Order of Magnitude, and it's like a game where you're supposed to start by colonizing the moon, and then eventually you're like building Dyson spheres and stuff. Okay, so these are failed prototypes. Like they in house, they made this prototype of a game yeah. and then decided it didn't work and so they give it away oh my goodness that's the yeah. greatest thing i've ever heard everybody should do that right i mean like if you if you like, spent time you developing something and like you know writing the software and then you and even maybe like sharing the the software with people and like showing them what it does and then you're like yeah but it's not really worth working on anymore like you'd have to be a criminal to not release that source code yeah, why, right. Why not? <laughs> right. <laughs> but but yeah, so they they have made a number of prototypes in house that just haven't gone anywhere, and they're like, you know what? We've got enough of these. We're just going to make a series out of it. So they're releasing one a month, and uh, then there's like I think a five or ten dollars you can donate to some charity or something, and then they'll give you the game and you can play it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so you use it to raise money for charity. Even better. So you, you right. make it clear to the customer, you are not buying a product. This is not finished. It'll probably crash. It's a pile of crap. But we're, this is for charity, so whatever. Right, right. And then they make a little video, you know, an hour, hour, half video or whatever about it, saying, here's what worked, here's what didn't, here's why we were trying to do this, here's the big vision, uh, this is why we stopped working on it, or whatever. Valve kind of did that. They didn't give the game away, but they talked a lot about it. They, I forget what it was called, but they had a few, they had sort of this thing they did, I think it was back in Left for Dead days, or maybe it's what left led to Left for Dead, but they just sort of like turned everybody loose and said, yeah, make a bunch of demos, and they did, and they didn't get any usable games out of it, but they got a bunch of technology that got repurposed into other games. I wish I could remember what these demos were called. You could find videos on, on them for a while. 
I seem to remember something about that, but yeah, I don't remember the specifics I either. I remember one where it was two robots that talked to each other, and it was just some system for generating, um, like NPC banter. Not to generate the banter, but to make it happen at an appropriate time and pace, you know. Right, so you're not just screaming combat taunts one after the other. Right, well this was, I think they had a bunch of funny things that you could say, but I think one of the problems was how often NPCs had fun things to say while the player was in the middle of smashing up boxes with a crowbar and they didn't hear it. And then you go over, oh, what did I miss? And the NPCs are totally silent. And so they were like, well, how can we make it so that these lines land at the appropriate mo This is very foggy. This is like what I remember 10 years later was like, how can we make them smarter about when they talk and how they talk and, and stuff like that? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea for them to develop. I mean, usually right, they do it with like level pacing, right? Where there's a long corridor or like a tram or something and then they do some banter at you where there's nothing else for you right. to do anyway. Right, but sometimes there's those NPC conversations. One of the most famous ones, or not famous, one of the most notable ones, is there's some, right at the end of Half-Life 2, Episode 2, there's some idiot who's just talking nonsense, he's trying to brag, and he is bragging about, oh, I use, oh, you guys use the AR-2? Uh, I used the AR-3, yeah, I did that, and there is no such gun. And it's just a silly conversation, and it's kind of meta. Like, I didn't think these people used the words on the HUD. I don't think I didn't think the stuff displayed in the HUD was what the words these people would use. But whatever. Um, the point being, that's an easy conversation to miss. Like that guy sort of starts talking when you enter the general region. When you get. <laughs> you know, way before you get within earshot. So it's easy for you, depending on, you might hear the whole thing and he might say it right while you're standing by him, or he might be done with his entire speech before you get anywhere near him, depending on how much you like to poke around the previous room. Yeah. Yeah, depending on if you turn right or left or whatever. Right. So, like, they were trying to solve problems like that. And there was a bunch of cool little, like, amusing demos. Some of it uh, fed into p the portal games. I think some of it got repurposed for like Wheatley technology Anyway Anyway, so valve did that and even though they didn't share it with us. We got to see some of it at least well Do you want to do a mailbag? <laughs> sure, let's do a mailbag go for it. Hi That's not it's not canon deadly dark <sighs> Okay, hi so, Casey Hudson and Mark Dara, Dara are leaving Bioware, if IGN is to be trusted. And then there's a link to the article. Any particular opinion on this development? Best regards, Deadly Dark. Thank you for the, if not entirely correctly prefaced, at least real question, Deadly Dark. So, yes, this has been confirmed since then. Um, I don't have... A lot to say on this unfortunately I think it's an interesting development for the record I don't think this harms Bioware as it's for one thing as far as I'm concerned Bioware is ruined as a storyteller people tell me they like the <laughs> Dragon Age games but I'm just I don't feel after Inquisition I have no interest in any more Dragon Aging I didn't even like Dragon Age 2 that much I did not finish it I was bored so I'm not into, and I don't know why, I just, uh, Dragon Age 2 just is not on my wavelength for whatever reason. And they've put out two horrible Mass Effect games. <laughs> I know one of them was another studio, but the point is, I don't think this, this company knows how to tell stories. I don't think the people at the top know how to set priorities for storytelling, right? Mm, right. Casey Hudson... I made a big deal during my Mass Effect series where I was like, oh, we, you know, let's just treat the art, the writer as an abstract person. We're not going to name names or put any blame on it. But in my secret heart of hearts, mm -hmm. a lot of the, yeah. I put the, 
I put a lot of the blame on Casey Hudson and Mac Walters. And it just has to be on them. I mean, those were the two people in charge of the quality of the product and its overall design. <laughs> like, nobody else was in a position to, like, cha challenge them. And so I have an incredibly um, low opinion of Hudson's work. Maybe he's done good on other projects, but nothing he's done has impressed me. So, I don't see this as like, oh no, yet more damage to Bioware. I just like, th another couple decks of the Titanic went underwater. This doesn't change the trajectory <laughs> or where it's going to be at the end of the night. It's still ending up on the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> its fate was sealed ages ago. We're just waiting for it to all, all finish. For, so, so we can safely go recover the lifeboats? Is that, is that how this story right. ends? Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of that. Like, this is probably a good thing. I noticed there's been a lot of this. Um, there, there was another story. Someone big left a different studio in the last couple of weeks, but now it escapes me. And every time it happens, I think, that's good. Um, you know, talented people. Now, I don't really think much of Casey Hudson's work, but, you know, Probably a lot of people do. He's, he certainly has some talent. Even if I don't like his work, I'll bet you there are millions of people that do. And the same is probably true of Mark Dara. And so it's great that they're leaving this dysfunctional studio and going on their own. Every time I see somebody break from EA and form their own studio, I see that as a net positive. Like, the, if you think you've got enough money to get a game ready to ship, and you can make that happen, then you will, of course, be much better doing that as an independent studio. And so the whole trajectory of the industry is really interesting to me. Like it was all indie studios and they would, you know, give the, they would sell their games to big publishers. Then they sold themselves to big publishers because it was too risky to be indie. And now we're seeing all those big names go indie again. Like, everybody's like, this sucks. Let's go back to being an independent studio. And I think the tools are getting there, and I think the market is there for mid-budget games. And so this is probably like a correction to the, to the stuff that happened 20 years ago when the big publishers just gobbled up all the talent and misused it. So to me, this is net positive, even if it's Casey Hud Hudson, who I don't really care about. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he'll be able to contribute to the game's development as opposed to contributing to its destruction. <laughs> right? It, it may just be that he he does good in a leadership position, but he's not very good at, you know, writing. And if you teamed him up with a great writer, he would stay in his lane and you could have a fantastic game. I don't know the guy. He could be fine. Maybe he didn't even want to do any writing or any... You know, he just didn't want to be involved, but he had to be in, in Mass Effect 3. It's hard to say. So, we're at half a show. Uh, did you play any video games this week? Well, there was this one game. You probably haven't heard of it. Uh, but... <laughs> It's small. T speaking of small time underfunded indie games with a micro yeah, made by a single man. <laughs> so, so I played Star Citizen this week, uh, <laughs> which which the, there's a single man that claims he made the whole thing. I think. Well, it's certainly spearheaded uh, by a, a big personality. Uh, on the on the topic of big personalities who who maybe are not as good at their job as everyone would hope, right? Um, so Star Citizen had a a week like a free week uh, last week. It ended on the uh, December second, I think. And so I you actually could... saw, I actually saw that invite in the comments, and I copied it, and I was gonna paste it and go do it myself, and I thought. Do I want to play Super Star Citizen? And I thought about it, and then I said, "Nah." And I went back to Strong Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your old adventure game. Uh, it's um, okay. So, so first off, I am not the target audience for Star Citizen. So, like, 
everything I say about this game is from the position of someone who is not in a position to enjoy it. Like, I'm I'm not the I'm not the target market. This is a game that's got fantastic graphics. In fact, it was built in the Crisis Engine, or or like the right. I think it's in Amazon Lumberyard now, which is built on Crisis. So it's like Crisis games. And for those who aren't familiar, back in the day, when when computers were getting faster every year, the um there was this thing where if you could have a a computer that would run Crisis at full settings, you had it made. Like you were you were top of the heap as far as computers were concerned. You're an alpha gamer. Yes, yes. That's how you could tell. Like it was the it was the the shibboleth for for gamers. <laughs> can you run Crisis? Can first can you afford to buy Crisis? Because it was like seventy bucks or whatever. And then, can you afford to buy a computer that will actually run it? And then, can you afford to buy a computer that will actually run it well? And it was and never then, about, like, Are the you game. so yeah. lacking in taste that you want to play Crisis? <laughs> <laughs> that you would invite your friends over to show them that you're playing Crisis and check it out, dude. Right. Are you playing Crisis? Because it was there? never no, a good no, game. No, no, I'm watching internet porn. <laughs> it's not Crisis. I swear, <laughs> Mom. It's, it's just internet it's not... porn. <laughs> Right. It's like, it was never a good game. It was never a game that you played for the gameplay, for the systems, for the simulation. It was always just about not even how good the graphics were, but how impressive the graphics were. Right. Certainly not artistic. I mean, as somebody who played it, it was technically very proficient, but there was nothing artist like Half-Life is artistically proficient. And... You can fire up Half-Life 2 today, and it looks... I, I meant Half-Life 2. Half-Life 2 today, and it still just looks so... It looks like a modern game that somebody turned all the graphics down, you know, the texture resolution down to minimum. That's what Half-Life looks like today. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, it's it's well-coordinated, it's well-executed, it looks good. It doesn't look realistic, it doesn't look right. like a movie, but it... It looks like it's trying... It, it looks like it's hitting the target that it was shooting for. Mm, right. And Crisis looks like it was aiming for photorealism and missed. Yeah, it's it's just a little off. Um, but, I mean, like... So, so, like, that's what it's shooting for. It's shooting for not even photorealistic, but just, like, really impressive amounts of stuff so that you can tax your top-of-the-line gamer computer and and be the top gamer be an alpha gamer right it's like an alpha gamer game right the the thing that i noticed so, so i went to the i pasted the link in so i i copied the link and i'm like i am not going to have a good time at this like i'm not i'm not big on good graphics i want things to be low poly right like i was talking at the beginning of the show like i i want things to be like minimal and and streamlined and clean i like the witness like you know the witness is pretty but it's not realistic it's it's way too polished. It's, you know, it, and so like, I'm not going to have a good time with this game. I know I'm not going to okay. have a good time with this so game. You playing this game is like me playing an online shooter, like just getting into Fortnite just for the sake of it. Yeah. Yeah. And turning on the mic and like talking to all the guys that are speaking Chinese and your squad or whatever, and just like yelling profanities at them. Like, yeah, <laughs> not a good time for you. Right. Um, and so I went to the website and and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm definitely, I'm not going to have a good time with this game. Because I it recalled to mind when they did the, the Kickstarter. And I believe Star Citizen was one of the, it was a second. Because the first one was um, Telltale, right? Or, or or Double Fine? Who did that giant Kickstarter that was like $2 the, million? The, yeah, Double Fine was the first of the big Kickstarters. Yeah, I, yeah. And then Star yeah. Citizen, who had been in development for like four years or something at that point, were like, we could do a Kickstarter, we could make so much money. And they did. They made so much money. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I want to just like, I'm, I'm going to criticize Star Citizen a lot. But I want to say, it's not because it's a bad game. It's because it's not made for me. And it's not because they're successful. I, it's great that they're successful, and I'm happy that they're enabled to employ all these people making these models and doing all the game development and making all this marketing stuff and maintaining their website and all that stuff. Like, that's great. I'm glad that there are people out there who want this because it's really impressive. It's amazing. 
but it's not for me. And so I went to this website right. and I'm like, oh man, this is like, I, the, the impression I got immediately was like, this is like the super yacht of, of spaceship games. Like this is the, the high end multi-billionaire wants a spaceship man's spaceship. Right. And, and it's like, that's, that's not me. Like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like the hillbilly of, of spaceship mans. So, so I went on the website and it's all like super streamlined and, and it's not Flash obviously because Flash is dead, but like whatever, HTML5 animated everything and it, the website is a little bit laggy and a little bit janky because, you know, it's like all, <laughs> being all fancy and cool and... Uh, and you got to click the link and then that link leads you to a page. And it's got all these animated drop downs and they've got embedded videos in the background. And it's, it's just, oh, it's so great. You want you want to see this website on the screen of your of your day lounge in your super yacht, right? Like this is this fit right in. Right. And so I go to like play Star Citizen. Fine. OK, here we go. Click. And it brings you a page and it's got like this picture of like this vista and there's these guys in these super Italian designer spacesuits. And one of them's like standing on top of the mountain and he's like grabbing the other spacesuit guy's arm and like helping him up to the top of the mountain. And it's like, request an experienced player to help you learn how to play Star Citizen. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to have a bad time with this game. Right. <laughs> yeah, that is the most unwelcoming thing I've ever heard. So Okay, so a giant laggy website that invites you to socialize to begin playing a video game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you and, can just cover like, it. In, see the only way you can make it worse it. is if you covered it in angry bees. I mean, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll ship an, a box of angry bees to your door and the minute you click on our website. It's in our EULA. So I was... So I was like, no, I'm not going to request an experienced player to help me learn to play your game. That's what tutorial is for, that I play alone by myself because I don't want to interact with other people in your video game. That's why I'm playing a video game. If I want to interact with other people, I'm going to get up from my computer and walk into the other room and interact with my family. So anyway, so I, yeah, request an experienced player to help you play. No, no thanks. So, um, so then down at the bottom of that page, not a link to download the game, no. This is, then they've got a little advertisement for their their trade show that's happening in Star Citizen. And it's like, ask a friendly oh guide gosh. to, you know, come see, come see all our latest and iconic ships up close. Everything you can test fly for free. And, and it's like, oh man. Because remember, part of the thing for Star Citizen was like, you have to buy your spaceship and you buy your spaceship with real money. So... So you don't buy like a copy of Star Citizen, then you can just fly around in spaceships. You buy a license to fly a spaceship in Star Citizen. And then if that spaceship gets blown up in the game, there's like this insurance policy. It's like a 10 year insurance policy where they will replace the ship under any circumstances, which basically means you can respawn your ship. Great. Right. Like, just like every other game. Like that's not special. That's not extra. Like, come on. And some of these ships, like the low end ships start at like 50 bucks, you know, like the price of a full game is one spaceship in this game. So anyway, so you can come and like look at these ships and then you can get a, a how it works as it turns out is like a rental. So you can rent the ships for in-game currency. And then if you want to buy them, you have to buy them for real dollars. Um, and then during this, during this event, it, you can rent them for free until the end of the event. So it's like, okay. They want people to fly around their fancy spaceships and like, I get it. Uh, it would be nice if you could just do that all the time because it's like it's a game and it doesn't. There's no marginal cost for them anyway. I'm getting ahead of myself. So it's like, here's this, here's this, you know, thing. You can come to it in game and like see all these things. How do you get there? Ask a friendly guide to escort you to the convention <laughs> center on New Babbage, the planet of Microtech. And I was like, what on earth? Like, is it that hard to get there? moms are ready to help you get ready for school now. Ugh, right? You know, like, you can't just have a button in the game for, like, spawn at the convention. Maybe maybe just have a, a button in the game for, like, rent all the ships and spawn oh. in whichever one I want. No, no. Right. You have to you have to get a guide to escort you to the convention, You have to get apparently. a person like you're a child. It's so weird. 
And I, and I see what they're going for, right? They're going for like this, you know, get Jeeves to, you know, walk with you down to the ski lodge or whatever, right? Like they wanted, because they're targeting this like super elite gamer thing where they're like, oh, you're going to, you're so important that you're a VIP and all these people are going to be waiting on you hand and foot. And like, okay, that, that's not me, but I see what they're trying to do. Fine. Right. But how do I like, how, first off, why do uh, escort you to the convention? Like, is this, are we going to be walking? I thought this was a spaceship game. Can't I fly my spaceship to the convention? <laughs> right. <laughs> So, yeah, um, and so then there's some other stuff on their website. I, I was browsing through the ships. There's like a, a ship section. So I'm like, okay, like, what's these ships about? And so it's got this whole page about like, you can do all these things in your ships. And you can have fighter ships. And you can have cargo ships. And you can have industrial ships that are like mining and producing stuff and growing crops. And wait, growing agricultural ships to grow crops? What? That's hilarious. <laughs> what? I, so are there no planets in this universe? <laughs> Because it seems like a big a big ball of dirt held together by its own gravity would be a great place to plant crops. Right? I I'm I was flabbergasted. So I I checked and there aren't actually any spaceships that are agricultural for growing crops yet. Oh, okay. But oh. there is um a spaceship that's what is it? It's like a science ship and then it's like but it can also operate as a mobile hospital for emergencies or whatever like emergency response but like this is a game where if you die you just wake up in bed like is this is that canon or is that like an extra and an out of game mechanic like if your ship gets blown up you have to like file an insurance claim to get your ship back so that's right. not out of the game world but then how are they explaining like is there some insurance policy on you that they, they're just like res you somehow? Like how is what, where are you drawing the line between the conceit of the gameplay and the actual in world simulation? Right. So um, it clear. turns out, no. Yeah. The, you don't have a hospital ship. The, the easiest way is it turns out. Uh, and so to skip to the end, I guess I, I made like a two hour video of me just like walking around doing stuff in star citizen and you can watch on YouTube if you want. And um, I didn't do any commentaries, just like the sound of the game. And I put some some uh, timestamps on there for like, you know, so you can skip to parts and stuff. But the easiest way to heal yourself is just to kill yourself and respawn. Because uh, as far as I can tell, there's no way to get healed. <laughs> oh, I stubbed my toe. Let me get out my gun and just put it in my mouth. Make exactly. Yeah, no, no, literally. I, I fell off the ship like a little bit too far and hit the ground and I was at 99% health and your health doesn't regenerate. You don't, I'm like, apparently there's no way to kill to like, to get that health back. Um, but if you just hold down the backspace button, apparently there's like this auto pither in your helmet that just pokes you in the brain and you die. That's amazing. It's like the so, in-game yeah. acknowledging the out of game concerns. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Funny. It's so weird. Um, so so yeah, so like get a get a guide to walk you there. No, no thanks. Uh, you know, you can get a hospital ship. Uh, now I'll give that a pass. I mean, on on top of the that doesn't sound like fun. Um, you can't actually fly a lot of these ships cuz like you can buy them. You can spend 600, 750 dollars buying one of these ships. But they haven't actually made them yet. Like they're they're in oh. it says like in concept so like they I don't even know what the ship is gonna do i i heard about that um years ago but i thought that era was over i thought they were like okay we made all the ships now and and we're we're done doing, but they're still doing that yeah they're still doing that it's it's very strange i mean and and again i understand what they're trying to do and i even understand it from like an economics perspective because it's not cheap to make one of these very highly detailed ships. Like it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of modeling. It's a lot of texturing. It's a lot of uh, script development. It's a lot of optimization. You've got to do all the volumes correctly. You've got to get the level of detail correct. I mean, it's, it's hard to do. And if I were going to make, if someone were to pay me to make a 3D model without the scripting, not just the model of one of these ships, it would cost a lot more than $750. Like it would be months of work right. and thousands and thousands of dollars. So, so like 
to get access to one of these models, yeah, that's fair. But but on the other hand, you don't actually get access to the model. You just get to play the game where you walk around in the model. So it's like this weird thing where you're not really paying for the model and you're not really playing in a game. You're you're playing in this kind of like car sales lot where there's all these fancy spaceships flying around and it's like a track. It's like a it's like a test track almost. <laughs> that is so funny. So so you uh, so yeah, you can buy these ships um Let's see. So then I read the update bug fixes and um and so I haven't I haven't started playing the game yet, right? Like this is still like on the website. So I go to the bug fixes and there's like, you know, the latest release, bug fixes. Ground vehicles should no longer roll or fall through planetary surfaces when they are turned on. <laughs> wow, I wonder how they pulled that off. Yeah, cuz like if it they're turned off, they're fine. And while they're on, they're fine. It's just like, when you flip the switch, they're just like, whoop, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't happen anymore, apparently. Although, it did happen to me, uh, because we'll get to that later. So, and then another one is like, the Aegis Reclaimer bunk bed door should no longer trap the player when they are lying in it. <laughs> and I looked it up. The Aegis Reclaimer is like, it's an expensive ship. So, like, imagine spending hundreds of dollars on this fake spaceship in this fake computer game and you and you go and lie down in the bed so that you can respawn there later so that you can respawn on your fake spaceship when you fake die in this game and when you try to get out of the bed the door won't open oh my goodness like do you know how to do you know how to oh. prevent do you know how to get out of that situation in game do you kill yourself with that poke yourself in the brain feature you could, but you would respawn in your bed, where you're trapped by the door. Oh, no! You have to get a friend to come and and cut a hole in the side of your ship and board your ship, and then commandeer it, and then self-destruct it, so that you no longer respawn there. <laughs> and then murder yourself. Well, you'll die when the ship explodes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you could just have your, sh your friend shoot your ship, and, you know, like, really right. hope that the ship is in an area where there are no police around that are going to shoot at them for shooting your ship, which you, like, in a no-fire zone or something. It's just, you know, it's madness. Uh, so anyway, another known issue, uh, and this one was special to me, because remember that convention that's on New Babbage? Well, in the known issues list, it says ships landed at Norville and at New Babbage cannot be stored. It's, uh, okay. it's a known issue. They know it's an issue, and they decided to put their spaceship convention on this planet that has this issue where if you land your spaceship there, you can't just, like, put it into storage. It, you have to fly away with it again. Wow. I, oh. I'm just baffling. And there's, there's, uh, that's three out of a whole list. Now, they're cherry-picked, obviously. But, like, come on, Star Citizen. Okay, so, so then I'm like, all right. Great, I'm gonna I'm gonna download this game. I figured out through the menus to how to figure out how to download it. So I'd like sign up for an account, use the little code that the the guy pasted in the. Uh, thank you very much. I forget your name, but you know that was very helpful. And I hope that you got all your goodies. Um, and so I I log into my account and it sends me an email saying like, oh, we noticed that you logged in from a new location. You have to two factor authenticate, and here's this code to put in. I was like, okay, okay, fine, fine, whatever. So I two-factor authenticate, great. Now they've got my email, they know it's me, cool. Um, but I'm at work, so I'd like, I was setting all this stuff up, don't tell my boss. And uh, so then I go home to actually play the game. So I go home and uh, log in. It's like, oh, wait, we, you logged in from a new computer. You have to two-factor authenticate. Okay, fine, great. It Send me a code, yeah, good. Paste the code in. Um, and then I'm like, okay, I want to actually download the game. And it's like, okay, but who are you exactly? Two-factor authenticate again. So two-factor authenticate <laughs> again, okay, fine, great. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to log into the game and, you know, downloads the launcher. It's not actually the game. You know, it's like a hundred megabytes of just launcher and you start the launcher and it plays all this awesome music. Okay, cool. I'm glad that you downloaded that awesome music so you could play it while I'm waiting for the game to download. Um, uh, start downloading the game. Oh, two factor authenticate again, because you're logging into the oh. game launcher, not into the website. Okay, fine. Oh. Good. Oh. Yeah. Two factor authenticate again. Great. Um, download the game, you know, hundred gigabytes or whatever. Insane thing. All right, fine. Cool. It doesn't actually say how much it's going to download. It's just like, here we go. 
start downloading. There's 200,000 files left or whatever. And uh, so it's downloading, downloading, I walk away, I come back. Um, then it finally downloads and I'm like, play the game. It's like, terms of service. Okay, good. Terms of service. Great. First issue 2012. Yeah, okay. And also it, I started reading it and it's like, if you use our website, you implicitly agree to all these terms of service. I was like, how was I supposed to get this downloader if I didn't use your website? Why am I even reading this? If I implicitly agree, <laughs> why do you need me to agree to it? Anyway, whatever, fine, sure. Okay, terms of service, great. Um, and then it pops up a pre-release agreement. This game is not released for sale yet. And, you know, if you're a reviewer, you have to be kind to us and, and be careful. You know, anything may change at any time. And if you buy any currency in this game, you, you know, it may be removed at any time. And if you buy anything in this game, we reserve the right to remove it. And it's like, hang on, aren't you selling like hundred dollar content for this game? And yet when I want to play the game, I have to agree that you can just like decide that doesn't exist anymore. That's weird. Whatever. I'm, I'm not buying any of this stuff. Okay. Agreed. Right. EULA! Agree to the EULA! Okay. Yes. Yes, the EULA. Fine. And the EULA is like, this EULA includes the terms of service. It's like, yeah, but I already agreed to those. And it includes the privacy agreement. They never actually show you the privacy agreement. I guess it's too private. So then I'm like, okay, fine. Yes, EULA. Good. Go. Go. Launch the game. 25 seconds later, it brings up a loading screen. Seven seconds later, the main menu actually loads. Okay, good. Click go. Brings up all the character creation. Yes, 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 yes. Fine, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yes. Go. Minute and 50 seconds later, game actually launches. Okay. I'm in the game. In bed. In a hotel. Pop up. <laughs> Press G for grenades. What? This is the experience they want you to have. And so it's just like doing all these pop ups. Like every three seconds or whatever, this a new tip comes up. When you accept a mission, it'll show up on your star map. I'm lying in bed. For your sidearm, press backslash T for reload. Still in bed. Just giving me all this information. Minerals were spotted nearby. Press backslash to target minerals. I... I'm... Does it expect that, like, this bed is in a spaceship? Does it think I'm in a spaceship right now? Because I'm in a hotel. I can tell. Because I look out the window and I can see a, a city outside. This is like in Fall from the Sky, right? If I was in a spaceship, I would know. Right. <laughs> so, I get out of bed. Finally, it gives me the, the button to get out of bed. Okay, so I'm walking around my, my little thing. And, uh, and actually, at this point, I'm holding my baby. My baby's asleep in my arms, like in real life. And so I'm playing with one hand. So I'm like moving the mouse to look around and then like moving and using my hand to like push W to walk forward and then like turning and pressing W wherever and looking around. It's very pretty. Full credit to the game. It's gorgeous. Um, but then I walk up to the door to get out of my apartment and it's like, hold F for interaction mode. Now I have a problem because I can't hold F and use the mouse and click with the mouse button at the same time because I'm holding a baby. Right. What am I supposed to do, Star Citizen? Well, like, like, if you have only one arm or you're holding a baby, Star Citizen is not the game for you. So I put the baby down on the couch. Okay. Now that I know about interaction mode, I'm not going to go out the door. I'm going to try to interact with everything in my apartment because they made this right, gorgeous right. apartment. And it's, it's like, it, it's incredible. There's got to be some reason to be in here. Like, there's got to be something I can do with all this stuff. There's, like, a, a little stove top, and they've got, like, little cabinets. You've got, like, pull-out, uh, like a pull-out uh, wardrobe kind of thing with all these jackets hanging in it. You can interact with all this. All the drawers slide out. All the little, the mini fridge opens up, and then the door, like, pockets back into the cabinet. It's very cool. You can... Uh, you know, open the, there's a toilet that slides out of the wall and there's like all the, the shower head and you can, all these things, but none of them actually do anything. There's, there's no actual functionality in this entire apartment. Like it's all just flash. It's all just appearance. And like, I was like, this is awesome. This is exactly the game that they said I was going to get. I'm having the star citizen experience. This is perfect. Like, I don't even need a spaceship. I, here I am. In this awesome apartment, I've got I've got everything I need. Cool views, awesome things. I can open and close drawers. Sold. This is the Star Citizen. If, if that's what you want, <laughs> you get it. And it's free. I mean, you have to buy a spaceship in order to wake up in your apartment. But, but yeah. Wow. One thing I was I was disappointed about. 
uh, there is a there's a little panel with some buttons on it, and they're labeled. There's labels on everything. I mean, it's very very detailed. It's it's incredibly it's really too detailed. But there's this little panel, <laughs> and it's detailed. got a button with that says lights. Well, it's too and this is what I mean by too detailed, right? It's a it's got a button that says lights, but you can't interact with the button. There's no way to turn the lights on and off. I cannot throw a light switch rave. <sighs> Missed opportunity. But then why have the button there yeah. if it's not usable? It's like inviting right, you that's to what I'm saying. discover the disappointment. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying about this whole game. This whole right. game is why is all this detail here if you can't do anything with it? You can't like cook anything there was on the no... stovetop. You can't eat the cookies in the cookie jar. Like, there's a cookie jar right there. And this game has hunger mechanics. You'll die if you go too long without eating. And there's a jar of cookies right there in your apartment. You can't eat them. You can't take them with you. Like, <laughs> it says something about personal inventory. I went and bought some food. I couldn't find it later. Like, where is it? I don't know. You don't have any pockets. This is like a designer spacesuit with no pockets. You can't store food in it. It's just... Why have all these things if you can't interact with, if like, what is the point of all this? It's not... It's I worse than even. useless. It's, it's... It makes the game seem worse. Like, if there was no light switch, you wouldn't expect to be able to turn the lights on and off. Most game, most game spaces don't have light switches. And you don't go around going, hey, why can't I turn off the lights in this place? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's fine if the lights don't turn off. I I wasn't expecting to be able to. But if you, like, have all this detail, there's all these signs like, caution, stand clear, thermal vent, or whatever. But you can stand right next to it, it doesn't hurt you, like, it's, it doesn't do anything. There's, you know, little labels, pull for access. It's not an access panel. You can't access anything behind it. And, like, anyway, it's having, so... It, it, it's like a chair sitting in the middle of the room, but it's got a sign on it that says, please keep arms inside the ride until it comes to a complete stop. It's like, I didn't expect anything <laughs> right. from this chair until you put a sign on it promising me a ride. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. And he's like, I'm going to sit in that chair. What? It just sits here? Well, yeah, of course. What would you expect a chair to do? Okay, but why'd you put the sign there? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so so I finally interact with the door panel and you can't just interact with the door There's like a little panel next to the door So there's like this little hidden object game where where you try to get out of your apartment in the spaceship game <laughs> It's like an escape room just think of it as an escape room So so I get out of the escape room and true to escape room form you can't get back in like There's no way to get back into your apartment there's... What? you can't! What happens when you try... you just... the door's not interactive? Yeah, the door's not interactive and the little panel next to the door isn't interactive. And it, like, I went all the way down to the lobby, came all the way back up. No. And there's ten floors of these rooms. That, like, I don't know how to get... Maybe... maybe there's some way to do it, like, where you talk to the clerk at the front desk, although it doesn't seem like you can talk to anybody in this game. But, like, there's got... it seems like there's got to be some way to get a room. But, like, once you leave, it's not... apparently, it's not your room. It's just... A room. You just woke up in someone's room, and you don't have a key. You just woke up in a room. That's why you couldn't eat the cookies. They weren't yours. Not your cookies. You got to pay for those cookies. Yeah, I don't know. So, Seven hundred and fifty dollars. So I, while I'm, so I go into the elevator. I click on the call. Okay, so so this is the spaceship experience game I want. I want to be able to walk out of my awesome-looking apartment in which nothing's interactable. See this view now. The view is gorgeous. It's glorious. There's this glorious view, and you're in this giant sky rise, and it's awesome architecture. Uh, although the architecture doesn't quite match up with, like... Anyway, it it's not quite right, because you can see out... The, it, the whole thing is curved around, and you can see out your window and, like, into the, the windows next door, and and the window that you're looking out of is much taller than the windows in the that you can see out the window. Oh, so, right. I don't know what's going on with that. But... Um, so I go and I call the elevator and like, this is the experience I want. I want to wait for an elevator in a game. Like, that's, that's what I want. I want to have to wait for the elevator. So I, I push the call elevator button. And this is one of the, this is one of the gripes that I, I'm really not pleased about is that when you push the elevator button, there's no indication that the elevator has actually been called until you exit interaction mode and move your view away from it. And if you move your view away and the button stays lit up, that means the elevator has been called, but there's no 
audio signal. There's no little ding. There's no arrow showing up or down. There's nothing. You just, you mouse over the button, it lights up, you click on it, no indication of any interaction, you close the interaction menu and turn away from it, and the button stays lit up, or if it if it doesn't stay lit up, then you have to go back into the interaction menu and try to press the button again. You can see me doing this for, I think, ten and a half minutes, uh, trying to call an elevator at some point in the video that I made. That sounds like an amazingly immersive experience. It's just like being in a, at a real elevator where you can't figure out what you're doing or where you are or why you want to go anywhere. <laughs> right, except that in with a real elevator, if you push the button, the button stays lit up. Whereas in this case, sometimes the button just doesn't stay lit up. It's just like you didn't press it button enough, I guess. So anyway, so I, I call the elevator. It does show up for me this time. I walk in and now I'm in the elevator and like, okay, I guess now is a good time to look at my watch or something. So I, I press, I did watch a little bit of some YouTube videos on like how to play Star Citizen. So I wasn't just bumbling around wasting my time. Um, and so I know like, you know, the button wait a minute, wait a minute. HUD. This is the last 10 minutes is you not wasting your time. Oh, no, no, not the last, not the last 10 minutes. That's like in the middle of my play, my two hour video that I made. And that's not even <laughs> the first playthrough. That's like, that's later on when I was experienced. It took me 10 minutes to call an elevator. Okay, continue. Okay, so I bring up my, my, my HUD and the HUD's got like, one of the menus is to allow you to change your your appearance. Now, you can't just like wake up in your apartment and like open this awesome pull out wardrobe and like click on the jacket and change your appearance because that would make sense. You can at any time, anywhere, pull up your watch and change your appearance. That's how you change clothes from your watch. So I pull up the watch and like I'm watching my character. So which I so I'm it's like a mirror, it's like a tiny mirror I guess where I can see myself and I guess I am doing an idle animation in the game or is this like my watch simulating me? It, is this a live video of me? Or, I don't know. It must not be a live video because there's definitely IK joint judder in the character on my watch. And, like, certainly, they would never put that in this incredibly expensive, high-quality game. Also, I'm willing to bet the character that you're looking at on your watch isn't looking at his watch. No, it's not. It's just kind of lounging about standing chalantly, I guess. Uh, so, so that was not impressive. Um, so then I, I, like, I turn around and I try to get out of the elevator and it's, it, I click on, I, I forget what I, I click on a button or something and then, um, the game crashes and I'm kicked out Aww. of the server. So I didn't quite get all the way to the lobby of the hotel in my first playthrough. But that's okay, I persisted. I logged back in, I restarted the game. 30 seconds of, of start window or whatever. I, I wanna join the server, but New Babbage is offline. So like, I can't join New Babbage anymore, apparently. Now I have to join Stanton, I guess? And, like the menus are different. Um, so I click on Stanton and I say join, but then I end up in New Babbage anyway. So don't know what the deal with that is. Um, wake him in my bed, <laughs> walk to the door, open the door, walk out, push the button for the elevator, wait for the elevator, get down to the lobby, walk out in the lobby, everyone's standing on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> on one couch, or like everybody has their own couch? Well, I assume that, I hope, I mean, I really hope that that people didn't like go over to the couches and then like, sit down on them and then press the button to stand up and then log out. What I assume happened is like someone sat down on the couch and then logged out and then when the server booted everyone off and then logged everyone back in, it didn't know to have them sitting down so they're just standing up. But there, because like there were multiple people logged out in that position, there are multiple people like all standing inside each other. So there's this weird like chimera effect where there's like three or four or maybe ten, I don't know, I can't tell how many people like standing in exactly the same spot. Oh. This is the again, ace experience. This is like the and, really immersive experience that I want from Star Citizen. And you wouldn't think anything. I mean, they could have just like you respawned at your bedroom. 
Why did everybody, like, if it wasn't trying to simulate that you're actually standing there while you're offline, this wouldn't be a problem. But it tries to do this incredibly complicated thing and then fails and looks ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's it, like, like in it's World of Warcraft trying to do when the server too goes much. down. Yeah, when the server goes down in World of Warcraft, you don't log back in and see everybody standing where they were before the logout. They're just not there. Yeah, exactly. It's a clean server. It's kind of nice. And maybe these are NPCs. Maybe maybe they aren't logged out players. But like, why are there so many NPCs standing on the couches? <laughs> right. It's for future future releases. We haven't gotten sitting down technology working yet. What do you think this is? We've got we've got to make more light switches that can't, aren't animated. Yeah, so I so I made it down to the lobby. I walk down into public transit. This is the experience I want. I want to be able to log into my super spaceship cool ace gamer game and take public transit. That's what I right. want. So I go down, do you, I go through the little turnstile. Do you turn eventually style. get on a bus? You get on a bus yeah, and then you've got to wait. Like, I've got the space greyhound. Now, now to give it credit, everything is gorgeous. The public transit, super gorgeous. Not realistic. I mean, if this was real, there would be bums sleeping in there. There'd be, like, <laughs> stuff scrawled on the glass. There'd be, People you know, like, gang signs couches. scratched into the doors. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, like, not realistic at all. My verisimilitude, fully broken. But, gorgeous. Incredible. Um, one problem, though, I noticed in the transit station, there's, like, when you leave the transit station, there's these two paths. There's, like, two paths right next to each other, like two tunnels or whatever, so that I assume so that like the transit cars can pass each other going both ways, but they merge at the transit station. Now, if you've ever been on a subway, you know that this is the exact opposite of what actually happens because at the transit station, you want to be able to have one car that stopped at the, at the station and then have another car able to pass it. So you have two tracks. If you have two tracks anywhere, it's always at the transit station so that you can pass cars that are stopped there. But no, right. it's the exact opposite. Now, I have no clue why they did this. I have no clue why I care. Because this game is clearly bonkers and nonsense. But it bothers me. Like, if you're going to go through all the trouble of making two tracks on your super space monorail that only goes one way, like it doesn't go both ways. It always just circles around in the same directions. You don't ever need two tracks. Like they never pass each other. They're on the schedule. It's a computer game. You're never gonna have some sort of situation where like the car is down for maintenance and you've got to get it off the tracks. No, but if you're gonna go through all the trouble of putting that detail in there, make sure that you don't do it in such a way that it makes absolutely no sense whatever. whatever. <laughs> We're running long, but I don't want this to stop. This is so fun. I'm not I'm done having... yet. You can't oh, stop okay. me. You're going to okay. have to have you're going to have to have Isaac edit all this out because I just got to the convention center. I have taken public transit. I have reached the transit center and I'm in the lobby and I have to take another elevator to get up to the the no. convention floor. Now, this oh, elevator, elevator isn't just one elevator. It's like a bank of six elevators. You have a choice. You have a you have a great a great feast of options of which identical elevator you want to use to access the convention floor. And I can only assume it's because the, each one of these is like actually simulated and they don't want to have like a bunch of people trying to get into the convention center and have to wait for the elevator to actually simulate moving up and down or something. Which is total nonsense because you could just have the elevator teleport people instantly and it's obviously just a stand-in for loading screen. But, okay, fine. I click the button to get up to the convention center and it is, just like I expected, completely reminiscent of the Monaco Yacht Show in space! Except that it's not actually in space because it's on a planet in this stupid terrestrial convention center. And there's no windows. Like, you could have had this spaceship convention in space. How could you miss this opportunity? Right. What what kind of design choice, except that you're trying to feel like a real super yacht convention, like a supercars thing. I, I mean, like, right. it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's amazing. 
But like, there's no reason for you to have a spaceship convention on the ground. That's the whole point of a spaceship, is you don't have to ever go to, to the planet. <sighs> so, so I walk up to the, the thing and, um, and there's like all these guns lined up on the wall and I can like buy the guns and there's all these like spaceship cannons and there's all this awesome stuff and like, I don't know how I would buy this stuff except to go to the convention center. Like, there's no interface menu. You can't just, like, bring up an interface menu and be like, buy a thing. You have to actually wake up in your bed, walk to the elevator, go down to the lobby, go to take public transit, walk up to the elevator, go up the elevator and walk into the convention center and go walk up to the thing that you want to buy and click on it. Like, you're in some sort of, like, real-life situation. But this is a video game. Like, like, it reminded me of that mall thing that you were working on years ago, right? Where, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to make this experience like real life when the entire point is that it doesn't have to be so tr like such a trial in order to purchase and this in thing? In real life, in real life, we have Amazon.com. Like, do people in the future yes. go back to going to malls? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's it's so it's so backward. I mean, and it's again, it's beautiful. It's it's an impressive. I loved if. If I had been there, I would have loved to be there because it feels like you're a billionaire. It feels like you're there and the whole thing was laid out just to get you to spend your billions on these incredible pieces of hardware. And they look incredible. And I'm sure they smell incredible, although they haven't put that in the game yet. Or, or maybe I just don't have the hardware to experience it. And, but like, it's just so, it's such a weird backward way to make a video game. And I was just so... So anyway, so I, I get to the convention center, I'm walking around looking at ships, and I want to get on one of these ships, right? Like, they're on the show floors, obviously you can walk around them, and like, go inside and take a tour, right? Like, that's what you can do at a real yacht convention, you get to go in the spaceships. But I can't figure out how to get into these spaceships. Apparently they're show floor <laughs> models and they don't have an interior, or something. Uh, like, right. even though that makes no sense. Fine. Whatever. So I walk down to the basement, and finally find the terminal where I can rent a spaceship. And you can't just say like, Rent all the spaceships. I want to fly them all. You have to go to each manufacturer's page and then like scroll through their options that they're offering and like click on the one and then like bring up the buy options. And it feels a lot like the Epic Store where they're trying to condition you into the experience of spending money in on this game so that you'll be more likely to spend money on the game in the future. And it's like, okay, I know what you're doing. It's not going to work on me, but I appreciate that you're at least trying. Um, so I... I check out a couple ships. I'm not going to like rent the whole catalog because I'm not going to have time to fly them all, but I, I get some really big expensive ones that I would never be able to afford, you know, the six, seven hundred dollar ones. And, and I get some really tiny ones that should be fun to fly around and, um, and, you know, rent them out. And then I need to actually get to my spaceship because you can't just like teleport and beam me up, Scotty, or whatever. Like you have to walk. Right back down to the elevators and go back down and go to no. public transit and take the public no. transit to the star no. station and then go up the elevator at the star station and then go through security and then go I, I i don't i forget if there's another elevator after security or or if there's only the one elevator um but then you get to the little kiosk uh well first you have to find the kiosk obviously you know there's there's like commercial flights and there's like the little food court and it's, it's amazing. It feels very real, except that none of this makes any sense. But so you go up to the little kiosk and you click the button and you say, like, get me my starship and, and bring it to wherever I guess you want to bring it to. I'm not your boss or your mom, like whatever game. Just let me do the starship thing. I've been playing this game for like two hours and I haven't gotten in a starship yet. And my patience maybe is is wearing just a tad so so i tell it you know load my starship and i get into the into the elevator and tells me what what dock my starship is in i have to remember that because it's not going to tell me on the ui or anything i have to just remember like like a meat person which button to press on the elevator right. to get to the dock where my fake spaceship that i'm fake renting from a fake manufacturer somewhere is and so i finally get out and i can finally walk around in the hangar where this spaceship is and again beautiful stunning incredible attention to detail like you can walk into the landing gear and they've got all these pipes and and bits and dangly stuff and little releases and catches and and there's these hydraulic tubes running around and i'm sure it's all animated so that if i were ever able to see it when someone else was taking off in the spaceship that i am going to have to be flying 
uh, that it would look incredible. Um, it's, it's amazing. But again, like on the show floor, I can't figure out how to actually get on board this starship. <laughs> um, and so I look around for, I don't know, probably 10 minutes. And then I'm like, okay, fine. Like, why am I doing this to myself? I'm going to search for it on the internet. So I search for it on Google. Uh, I have to search for it three times and none of them actually give me the answer. The closest I get is that there's a ramp on the front. Um, and hopefully I can tell which end is the front because that's the one with the cockpit on it. Hopefully this isn't like one of those backward spaceships, I guess. So like the front somewhere, there's a ramp. How do you get the ramp to come down? I don't know. It's another hidden object game, as it turns out, because on this, and this ship is like, I don't know, 80 meters long. It's gargantuan. It's, it's got a crew of six. It weighs, I don't know how many thousand metric tons. The only way to get on board is one button that is, I kid you not, probably about like 10 centimeters square. And, and it's lit up, wow. but there are so many lights on this thing. They're all lit up. They're, they're greebles everywhere. I can click on everything. Not one of them does a thing. I called up on my, on my communicator. Can I call my ship? Can I, do I have a remote fob for my spaceship? Maybe that would be a cool thing to have, you know, push the button and the, the, the deck comes down. You could like stand there and then like step back onto the, onto the ramp and then push the button again. And it would close up and you'd be inside your spaceship. No, can't do that. You got to play the hidden object game where you have to find the tiny button that you have to press to get in to this thing. And so, so while I'm looking for this, I also have global chat up because why not? This is the experience they want me to have, right? Global chat's going. And one of the guys is complaining. He's like, oh, when I was in the space dock, had my ramp down and some jackass got on board and now I can't get him off. Like, is there no way to kick someone off your spaceship? And then other guys are like, no, there's no way. You can't get anyone off your spaceship. You're going to have to self-destruct the thing in order to get him off of it. And it's like, what? 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 What even? So, like, I can't figure out how to get on board my own spaceship, but any old Yahoo can just go to Dock 20 and stand around waiting for someone to spawn their spaceship in and then just hop on board while they got the door unlocked and there's no police you can call? I mean, like... I can call, the police get called on me if I try to shoot anybody, but if someone gets on board my ship without my permission, I can't even at all get them off? Like, and then I, I, I'm looking and I, I looked up like how to get out of the turret because that's also a thing I did. I, once I got on board the ship, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get in the turret. Cool. How do I get out? There's no button for get out of this thing. So I look it up online. And it's like, oh yeah, be careful because if someone's on board your ship and you're getting out of your turret, the animation for you getting out of your turret will play for long enough that they can kill you while you're getting out of your turret and you can't defend yourself because the animation is still playing. <sighs> but it's wow. so realistic. I mean, like, this is the experience I want from Star Citizen. This <laughs> is it. There's, you go into the medical bay and, and you open the door, the outer door for the medical bay. It's got like an airlock or, or something, I guess. You don't have, it's not an actual airlock because there are actual airlocks in the game and they operate differently. But there's these two doors, inner and outer door. And you go into the thing and in between the inner and outer door, there's this little, little mezzanine area, you know, with like the wall panels and it looks all very high tech. And on each one of the little tiny wall, there's like hexagonal wall panels and it says, stand clear. And it, they're on both sides of me. And I don't know. What am I supposed to be standing clear from? And I'm walking into the medical bay. Is this, is this dangerous? Is this like the most dangerous part of the whole ship? Is this ha tiny hallway to get into the med bay? You know, that whole thing with people being able to get on your ship. It's like a multiplayer game designed by somebody who just got here from 1990. They have no idea what's happened in multiplayer games for the last 30 years. And they're like, I've got an idea of how we can do... Oh, these are great graphics you have here in the future. Let me tell you how to make this game. I have a dream about how people will interact with each other. And they've never actually seen what happens when you allow people, anonymous people, to interact in a virtual space. Frankly, I think it's amazing that that you didn't like find yourself with somebody blocking a doorway or some jackass just taking the elevator up and down over and over again <laughs> right right exactly it's uh it's so it's so poorly thought through like the whole thing is just it's just fancy graphics it's just crisis in space 
And, and again, not for me, for someone, clearly, they've made millions, hundreds of millions, if I'm not mistaken, like, on this game. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And the product they have looks just incredible, except that you can't see yourself in reflections in the bathroom mirror. That is very weird. Like, what's up with that? Oh, man, literally unplayable. Yeah, no, no way. I mean, also what, you can't use why? anything on what? board the ship other than the turrets, but yeah. Why have a mirror? Just don't have a mirror. It's a future bathroom. They just don't, you know, it's really distracting to have a mirror you can't see yourself in. But if you just don't have a mirror, then you're, then you're like, oh, weird, no mirror. But whatever. It's way more immersion shattering to have a mirror that doesn't reflect you than it is to have no mirror at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I get, so I get on board my spaceship and I find the cockpit and I get in the launch seat and I know from watching the videos what buttons to push to get my spaceship to launch. But what the tutorials don't say is never, ever, ever, ever under any circumstances ever move the mouse before you have actually fully launched your ship because moving the mouse will make your ship turn. And if you're in your incredibly expensive, high tech, six person exploration corvette that is almost as long as the entire launch door and you rotate your ship just a little you will replay the launch sequence from star quest wait what oh right you, you galaxy yes. quest you mean galaxy quest yeah yeah that one right where he just like grinds against the the launch bay on the way out oh right because he has no clue how to fly the spaceship. And I feel for him because I've never flown a spaceship in this game before. There's no way to bring up a simulator. There's no way to do a training thing. It's just, it's just, here you go. Here are the keys to your multi-billion dollar space yacht. Figure out how to get past the reef at the end of the dock. And, uh, and so I get stuck in geometry and, um, and it, the ship is juddering and there are collision alarms going off and my shields are down and then they're back up and then they're back down. It's a roller coaster of emotion. And, and I finally managed to like somehow clip my geometry through the hangar and I'm free. And the guy comes on the, the intercom, please visit again soon. And I'm like, mm, I know I'm going to be back here, but it's going to be in pieces. <laughs> it's going to be my dead body respawning in my hotel room minus this spaceship. <laughs> Which will perish yes. in, in the vacuum. Oh, yes. So, so I, I, I fly out into space. And you remember I had visited the medical bay before. Uh, and I'd lay down on one of the beds. And that's cool. So I, got, I get out of the hangar and I'm flying away. But I can't really go anywhere. Because when I was crashing into the, the geometry of the, the hangar, uh, my engines got damaged. And so I can't really fly <laughs> very fast at all. Like I'm going, I think, 10 meters a second, maybe. <laughs> Um, and so I can use a hyper drive like that works fine the Q drive or whatever it is like I can jump all over the place But when you jump to somewhere you're like, you know a kilometer away from it And you got to like put on your afterburners and fly up to it like awesome speedboat or whatever But my engines are damaged so can't do that um, and I can't even really practically get back to the space hangar because I would teleport, you know warp in and then like I have to putter along, you know like a tugboat or whatever and get back there so I decided to just blow up my spaceship. That's how you do it in this game, right? Just right. blow the thing up. Don't call a tow truck. Just press the self-destruct. So I do. I press the self-destruct. And then I'm like, oh, I know what I could do. I could, like, get out of my spaceship and then, like, you know, float around in space so I can see the explosion from outside. That would be cool. And so I get out, but I can't really figure out how to get out of my spaceship now that I'm in it. And um, the spaceship explodes with me inside, which, you know, oh, no, 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 that's not what happened. That's not what happened. It, I, I, I'm like, okay, I can't figure out how to get out. So I'm just going to die so I can respawn back at the hotel. So I die and I respawn back in the medical bay. And then the ship explodes. Okay, which medical bay? The one back in the hotel? No, no, the one at the back of my ship that just exploded. <laughs> So you died twice. Yep. And then the game crashed. Aww. So, I go back, I wait for the tram, I wait for all the elevators. 
um, I go and I, I get my little tiny ship out and I, I find some off the side thing and that's where I started like I load my ship in but it's in the hangar but it's like on its side and kind of like bouncing up and down really fast you know like maybe once a frame as if it's having some sort of G fighting thing and um, or, or Z fighting collision problem where like one part is stuck under the floor and the rest of it's above the floor and it can't decide which way it wants to go so I get on that right. thing and it's like supposed to be this racing ship or whatever but I can't get it to do anything and because it's all stuck on the floor. And so I managed to get it to slide kind of sideways and out and at an angle over to the edge of the hangar. Not like the door of the hangar, just like, you know, one of the sides of the hangar where you would keep all the welding torches or stuff if this game had anything resembling verisimilitude. And then I can't right. get it to do anything. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to call up the guy at the hangar and like tell him to just take it back and respawn it. Fine. So I call him up and it's like, all right, please return your vehicle to the hangar. And I look over and like not not three meters away, there's this big square where it's like, return your vehicle to this area. But I can't. I can't get my vehicle to get into that square. So after fighting with it for like another 10 minutes or whatever, I finally just go back and I claim insurance on my vehicle. I'm like, it's total. It's a total <laughs> loss. I can't do anything with it. You're going to have to send me a new one. And they're like, are you sure? Are you sure we can't just tow it? Are you sure, sir? Is is how, Were you injured in the collision? Were you injured in the, the humongous explosion that no doubt destroyed your vehicle? No, no, I'm fine. I walked away from it somehow. And so I, I call for a new one. And they're like, okay, but it's going to take a while to process your claim. And you can pay some in-game money to make it go faster. I'm like, no, you know what? Just keep it. It's fine. And so for the rest of my play experience, that ship was sitting there at the side of that little hangar. And I could see it on my HUD. You could see it from anywhere in the galaxy. That ship right there. You need to know that your ship is there waiting for you. So if ever you go back and want to sit on top of your ship that is stuck in the floor, you can. That's the experience I was looking for from Star Citizen. And if you want to see the rest of my experience, you can watch the two-hour video that I made. And there's no commentary. And I posted the video and I put on the top of the video, no commentary, Star Citizen, two hours. And then, not within like... 20 minutes of me posting it, a representative from the Star Citizen Corporation, I can't remember the name of it because it starts with the guy's first name and I don't want to have to take up space in my brain for the guy who made up this game, posts a comment on my video that has like three views and he's like, don't worry, we're going to have commentary in the game before Christmas. It's coming out soon, but only for VIP members, so be sure to sign up. <laughs> That is beautiful. Okay, do me a favor. When you upload this to YouTube, please take that footage and have it play over this discussion. Please? Can you do that? Even though it'll mean re-uploading that. I would just... I would love that. <laughs> you... I can do that. Yeah. When I'm editing the diecast, I can just put the video footage right on top. Yeah. I appreciate that. That'll be wonderful. Because I, I usually just listen to it before we publish, but now I will listen to it and watch your, your trials. To be totally honest, this is the favorite diecast I've ever done. This was amazing. I've been grinning now for an hour solid. This is the most hilarious, <laughs> misbegotten, incomprehensibly weird, extravagantly stupid thing I've ever heard of. It's sort of, it's sort of admirable. And you made me it want to really play the game. Is. It really is incredible. Yeah, it, yeah, I wish that you could experience it for yourself without wasting five hours of your life. Right. But I mean, that seems like part of the, being stuck in like the men's room and not knowing how to open the door for an hour seems like part of the experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. And I skipped the, yeah, there's stuff in the video too, where I, I'm on an elevator and the elevator just like disappears and I'm, I have, I'm like stuck inside the geometry of the space station and like, I can't figure out how to get out of the hangar because there's this little hidden object button to call the elevator. That's unlike all the other buttons to call the elevator and all kinds of just goofy stuff. I'm flying my speeder and it explodes for no reason. I try to land at a spaceport and they shoot me down. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> Right. This is the longest diecast we've done in years. And I could listen to this all day, but I think we better bring it to a close. Please put me out of my misery. <clears throat> it sounds like 
Star Citizen already did. Multiple times. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you to everyone who sent in emails. We actually have a few more. We'll try and get to them in future episodes. But if you've got a question for the show, the email is diecast at shamusyoung.com. Thanks for listening, everybody, and thanks for suffering for us, Paul. No problem. It was it really was my pleasure. This is this is an incredible game. It's it's amazing. If any of this sounds interesting to you, do not hesitate to buy, and you can afford it, to buy a Starship in Star Citizen because it is an amazing experience, not an experience that I am ever going to repeat. Bye.